Howdy, big dogs. Welcome back to the HQ. Whether you're joining us from YouTube or the podcast, it is my pleasure to welcome you back. It's your boy, Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat. BDGE fantasy football is Friday, so you know we're flexing with the mock drafts. We're back on draft.com best balls. Guys, I can't stop doing these drafts. I can't stop. You got to do these drafts now because you got to take advantage of the ADPs that are just out of control. Guys, you can get super, 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 super late because the hype trains haven't started yet. So I love doing these drafts because you're getting guys in the in the eighth, seventh, ninth round that will be fifth, fourth round picks by the time the season rolls around. So if you're not familiar with draft.com, they are a best ball website, which means you just draft. You don't actually manage the team throughout the season. So it's good if one, this is awesome for taking advantage of ADPs, and you don't have to worry about moving anything in the waiver wire throughout the week. If you think you're a strong drafter, and if you think you could take advantage of uh, where players are going now, this is a really, really, really good idea and a good site for you. Uh, these are cash leagues. You can enter anywhere from $1 up to, I think, $1,000 entries. So um, you could play for as little as a dollar. The other thing is, too, if you sign up with my promo code BDGE or just go to draft.com slash BDGE, uh, use promo code BDGE, you will get an entry, a free entry into a $3 draft. So this is awesome for practicing mock drafts. This is awesome because since they're all cash leagues, obviously the ADPs are very good. So um, I'm going to be doing another one on here. I've done like 15 in the last couple of days. I'll be honest with you. I'm super addicted. So once you start, you will probably not stop, but it's really, really good practice because um, people are taking them seriously. I want to do something a little different today. We're actually going to do a six-person mock draft. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think the strategy is completely different when you have a smaller league. And this will help for any – and you could do uh, leagues that are three people, six people, uh, I believe eight people, ten people, twelve people. So those are different sizes. So it's very customizable in terms of what kind of league you want to do. And uh, when you're doing a smaller league – and this is for anyone who's in a smaller league, 18, whether it's best ball or redraft or whatever – uh, their strategy should be different. And the reason I say that is because when you have smaller teams, right, everybody's going to be stacked at running back. Everybody's going to be stacked at wide receiver. What I like to do is differentiate myself where I can. And a huge strategy for that would be if you're in a three, six, eight person draft is trying to grab a guy like Gronk. That's one of my fo like central strategies when I'm doing these smaller best ball drafts. Because when you grab a guy like Gronk, you're getting yourself such an advantage at a position Um where, you know, it's not going to be stacked because once you once Gronk is off the board, um, it kind of it wanes down after that. Right. And the tears start dropping. Now, running backs and wide receivers, like I said, they're going to be stacked because you're only there's only six teams. So everyone's going to have a, a ton of running backs, a ton of wide receivers that are really, really, really good. The thing about QBs is there's not much of a, a tier difference when it comes to quarterbacks. So you can grab Aaron Rodgers if you want. But like, you're fine with Tom Brady, you're fine with Cam Newton, you're fine with Russell Wilson, right? They're not much of a drop-off. So the the strategy when it comes to those two different positions are very different. I want to grab Gronk in every one of my small leagues, basically. So even if I have, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the first pick overall, right? And then my next pick is is going to be like pick 12 and 13, or even if I'm at pick like 10, I will jump up his ADP very, 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 very far, uh, and, and take him because normally he's not going to pick like 20 to 25 in most drafts, but I will take him 10 picks ahead just to have that advantage on a weekly basis. Cause this software, basically what it does is it takes, you draft a big, a big team, 18 people, and it takes the best, the, the highest scoring points for each position and starts them on a week by week basis. So you don't have to worry about sit start decisions, right? So when you have a guy like Gronk, you're getting a weekly advantage of the position where when you have your, you know, when everyone has, five top 25 running backs, it's hard to get that advantage because you're always going to have players that are, are, you know, really doing their thing. So that's kind of my strategy going into it. And we'll see if it works out for me. Um, we're still waiting on, I think, four other drafters. So it might be a little while before we actually kick this thing off. Why don't we jump into some, some Roto World news, see what's cracking in the last few days. Tyler Lockett believes Tyler Lockett is finally back all the way to 100% health. You know what, man? I, I, uh, I'm I really liking Tyler Lockett this year, especially in best ball. He's like a perfect target because he's going – where is he? Lockett. Lockett's all the way down at 183. He's after Terrell Pryor. 
guys that aren't even starters on their team. Like, that's absurd. So Tyler Lockett's one guy I absolutely love in best ball. Guys, this is why I'm saying you got to get on the best ball train because you could take advantage of these ADPs. Tyler Lockett there, you know, Paul Richardson's gone, obviously. Jimmy Graham is gone. He is like the clear-cut number two, um, and he's a big play guy. We all know that. We know he's good at taking advantage of Russell Wilson scrambling out and chucking up the deep ball. So he's a guy who's perfect for best ball because you don't have to decide when to start him. But when he has those big splash plays in those big weeks – Fully healthy, he should be. We've seen him flash plenty of times before. So Tyler Lockett's a guy I really don't hate drafting in best ball or redraft leagues, especially how late he's gone. People forget about him because he's been injured. CJ Procise, been impressed with his offseason, but he's competing for a roster spot. Yeah, man, all he does is get fucking injured. So they're really high in Rashad Penny. They're going to work on him on the third down, passing game, pass blocking. I doubt he's really going to be a great pass blocker by the time the season rolls around. But, you know, they have McKissick and they have a bunch of athletes in that backfield already. So, it's definitely possible that C.J. Procise could get cut. Chris Carson, he's a guy that just stood out in regards, uh, so fit and just so cut and quick and explosive. Man, you know, if you if you've been following me, you know how much I love Chris Carson last preseason. He was like one of my one of my top sleepers. I still love him, dude. It really wouldn't surprise me if Chris Carson is used a lot more than people suspect, and he actually cuts into Rashad Penny's workload a little bit. Man, Chris Carson is just so. He's so good. He's such an animal, man. He's like you. You seen that uh, that new picture of Chris of uh, Josh Gordon come out on uh, on Instagram the other day? Let me see if I can find it just by googling it. Images. What's the most recent? That picture with his biceps. His, his triceps were looking like fucking biceps. It was out of control. Um, I'll search Instagram for it. It's the Grizzy. It was insane, but the reason I'm even talking about this is because um, because Chris Carson is like the running back version of Josh Gordon. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you're doing that. BDGE underscore fantasy football. Hell yeah. Someone else already cop Dwayne Wade jersey. Yeah, this, this my man Jersey Jungle right here. We're kind of partnered up. He does authentic jerseys, NHL, NBA, NFL, all awesome jerseys right here. So if you check him out on Instagram, the Jersey Jungle, if you drop my name when you DM him for a jersey, he will hook you up with absolutely free shipping. And the jerseys start at $45 for authentic jerseys. So usually when you get those authentic jerseys and they're shipped from China and the shipping is like 20 or 30 bucks, drop my name, drop Big Dogs, and he'll give you absolutely free shipping anywhere inside the United States, guys. Look at these jerseys. They're sweet. I'm about to cop myself a couple when I get around to it. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon. Oh, do I actually have the... Oh, yeah. Come on. Ah, this is the picture. Yeah. Like, look at, look, that is unbelievable. Look at his arm right here. That's absurd. I feel like that's got to be photoshopped. His arm is bigger than his head. Whatever. Um, so, Chris Carson, yeah, my, my man's Chris Carson. I even, I like forget where these changes that go on are just really out of control. God, no one joining the goddamn leagues. This is out of control. Guys, if you join draft and use my promo code BDGE, I can draft with you. Like you can go on and invite me to drafts and stuff. So that's pretty cool. So make sure you make sure y'all doing that. Chris Carson's a fucking animal. Where you at though? Give me some like ripped ass pictures of you. I don't even him. This one's not bad. Look at that. Dude, he's a Beast. Man, if he didn't get hurt, he would have been such an animal last year. Uh, anyways, Jeremy Curley has been locked in as the Bill slot receiver. I literally would rather headbutt a knife than draft Jeremy Curley. Oh, really? He's gained 20 pounds of muscle. That's not even fucking possible in one offseason. Where Malcolm Mitchell's not been practicing at Patriots OTAs. Ah, what else is fucking new? That's why I didn't even mention him in the Julian Edelman video I put out yesterday. If you missed that, I put a uh, Julian Edelman suspension kind of impact video up. I'll, I'll link that down below and right there. I didn't Malcolm. I, I didn't mention Malcolm Mitchell just because like he's he's never in like he's never healthy. He's never practicing. He just like he's not going to get the opportunity if he's not practicing. So Jordan Matthews on the other hand, has made a good first impression with the Patriots, which is really good news because, you know, he is a slot receiver, but with Julian Edelman out, that means he'll probably be playing in a lot of two wide receiver sets, at least for the first four weeks. Because 
Uh, normally, it would probably have been just Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman on the outside in two wide receiver sets, but now it'll probably be Jordan Matthews. And anytime, I mean, the more time you could spend on the field with Tom Brady, like, eh, I ain't mad about it. Duke Johnson signs that three-year, $15 million extension. Man, I don't know what the Browns are doing with their money situation. They have so much to blow, I guess it really is like doesn't matter. But um, dude, this is crazy. How, why is nobody joining? Nobody joining. So you can do slow drafts or fast drafts. Should we just do a three-person draft? Oh, no, it's a $25 entry. I don't think I have enough in my, in my pool to do that. Would you guys like to see a three-person draft? Because I'll do a three-person draft at one point. Teams are stacked. Uh, but I don't want to waste your time. So Duke Johnson, three-year, $15 million thing. So, I mean, it, that's crazy the way the NFL is working. Think about, like, just a few years ago, they would no NFL team would sign a, a running back to that size contract just to be a passing down specialist. And I think it speaks to the league as a whole. And the Browns are doing a good job moving forward as a team that's looking at the future and looking at how the NFL game is working and looking how big of a – how big of a deal it is to have a good pass catching back, right? They they signed Carlos Hyde to about I think it was about the same deal, three year, fifteen million dollars. They choose um, you know Nick Chubb in the second round of the NFL draft, so they they invested heavily and still gave Duke Johnson his contract, which is it's really interesting to me. Um, rather than signing Carlos Hyde, they could have gotten someone cheap who does early down work and pass catching work, and then I don't know, whatever. But um. Yeah, I mean, dude, I don't know. It, let's see. Brown, uh, Brown, just 63 receptions through three NFL seasons. I don't know why they say Brown, but I think they meant Duke Johnson has averaged 63 receptions through three NFL seasons and caught a career high 74 balls last year. So I actually think those numbers are going to take a dip only because I just think his overall play volume, his overall snaps and opportunities are going to go down. So I think the Browns are looking at him as a real, like a good, uh, real life player. Like, I think Duke's ADP is a little high. He's probably the most set running back in terms of fantasy purposes for the Browns this year. Uh, But I I just don't think that he's going to return value where he's being picked, to be honest with you. So uh, Duke's not a guy I'm really hopping on too quickly in drafts. I mean, no, I'm probably staying away from that backfield unless I can get one of them for very late. I would have liked to see, because his contract was going to be over at the end of this year, I would have liked to see him get a shot at being like a feature back. You know, imagine like Duke Johnson. Imagine the Steelers don't sign, they don't re-sign Le'Veon Bell, and then they sign Duke Johnson next year. That would be an interesting match because they use running backs so heavily in the passing game. That'd be crazy. Andrew Luck is real close to throwing. Okay, I believe that shit when I, I still don't believe it when I see it. Out of control. Andrew Luck. Uh, now let's talk about the situation. If I had to put money on whether or not he is on the field for the Colts week one, I'm going to say yes. I think he's there. And for that reason, I think we are actually, I've actually been getting uh, T.Y. Hilton pretty often in drafts as of recently. Um, a, a lot in best ball drafts. Because, I I mean, the thing is with T.Y. Hilton is, like, he's dropping, right, to the fourth or fifth round now. And even if Luck misses, like, the first three, four weeks, and I don't even expect that to happen. Even if he does, T.Y. Hilton is still very capable of putting up splash plays and putting up those big games. Like, he did that a few few times with Jacoby Brissett last year, and they'll have better chemistry going into this year, a full offseason. Reports are saying T.Y. Hilton looks really good. So if Luck is back, you're getting Hilton at an even farther discount because, you know, obviously last year he was going around in the second round. He was going around like pick 15 to 20. And now if Andrew Luck is back, you'd still think he, that's about the value that you're getting from him. Um, the two of them could link up and Hilton's still very young. Andrew Luck should be fine if he gets on the field. And, uh, you know, you're getting T.Y. just for such a such a crazy discount. All right. You know what? We might move over to a different draft and see if I can get something that's closer to happening right now. Best drift, you know, actually no, damn it. I apologize. This is just out of control. I'm not very good. How do I leave this draft? Yeah, leave. Give me my monies back. All right, you know what? We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a three person draft. A $10 three-person draft. 
So, so the uh, the theory I was just talking about with is even stronger in in this type of draft, right? Because now with three people, the uh, the advantage is going to be absolutely crucial at these other positions. Uh, running back and wide receiver, you're going to have so many amazing players there. So in my opinion, it's crucial that you get Gronk. And uh, in terms of quarterbacks, the thing about quarterbacks is I don't think I would even touch one in these types of drafts until there's 18 rounds. So my 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 last round, 16, 17, 18, are going to be quarterbacks. I won't touch them before then. I'll stack up skill players and tight ends until then. Because think about it. Listen, if you wait till the last round, you're going to get a pairing of probably Stafford, Ben Roethlisberger, and like, you know, Andrew Luck if you want to, right? Those are all guys who are very capable of putting up like the 300 yard, four touchdown weeks, year in, I mean, week in and week out. So all you need is for one of them to be like a top six quarterback week by week, and you'll be fine at that position. Uh, so I wait on quarterbacks even more in this because by the time, you know, if, so you have three other people or two other people, right? And if they both take three quarterbacks that knocks off the top six, you're still having your choice. Oh, yeah, I'll probably even have better. I'll have a choice of like Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Matt Stafford, Kirk Cousins there, right? And pick three of those guys, you'll be fine on a week-to-week basis. So there's no sense at using an early round pick on Aaron Rodgers when you could use it on like David Johnson or you – not David Johnson, that's a retarded <laughs> statement. I apologize. But um, like, I don't know, Sony Michelle or, or Jarek McKinnon or something like that. There's no reason to reach at quarterback here. So wide receivers, same thing. Tight end, I, I you know, I want Gronk. And I'll probably end up taking another high selection. Maybe, maybe even a guy like Jimmy Graham. You know how much I hate him, but – He's a much better option in best ball leagues because his touchdown upside is very, 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 very high. And on a week-to-week basis, if he scores a touchdown, he's going to be one of the, you know, all you got to do as a tight end in fantasy is score a touchdown, and you're pretty much one of the top options for the week. All right, so let's just keep waiting. Kevin Kevin White is really hungry and showing a lot of passion this offseason. Yo, I, shit like that makes me so angry. You ain't doing shit this year, Kevin White. Bears coach Matt Nagy said he will have some fun utilizing Tariq Cohen. This is at least the third time the new head coach has talked up Cohen this offseason. You may look like you can run routes, but you can but can you really run routes? He's able to run routes, Nagy said. Can't just put him in the backfield and say to the middle linebacker, cover him. So we'll try to do some things here. He's an athletic kid who does a lot of things well. Coach shatters to be allowed. Cohen seems a lock to be better than 140 touches he saw as a rookie. I absolutely love that, that we're seeing a lot of chirping from the uh from the coach about Tariq Cohen um I'm rising on Tariq Cohen I'm falling a little bit on Jordan Howard and the reason is I I think Tariq Cohen is going to be utilized you know they're saying like Tariq Hill because Nagy's from the Chiefs obviously but I think Cohen's going to be more like a Rex Burkhead play and you look at um I I forget what podcast I was listening to but they were they were looking at neutral when, when a game, when the game script is neutral, so if like no team is leading by more than like six points, I think it was. So every, so the teams are both in the game, right? Neutral game script. It was like the Bears were one of like the top three run heaviest NFL teams, and the Chiefs were one of the top five pass heaviest teams uh, in neutral game script. So what that tells you is they're way more willing to just pass the ball uh, under Nagy, way more willing to just pass the ball on regular downs. So that that's really good for Tariq Cohen because he's probably going to be utilized. Uh, a lot. It's going to be like a spread offense and they're going to utilize multiple running backs probably. So Cohen's going to be on the field a ton. And if they have him going outside, if they have him in the slot, if they have him from the backfield, uh, Jesus Christ, man, no one's joining. I I apologize for the wait here, but I hope I'm giving you some good value before we wait. Maybe I'll do this before all my mock drafts, just run through Roto World. Um, They're going to be using him all over the field, man. Tariq Cohen could be a a big steal in PPR leagues. And also uh, draft is half point PPR. Everything else is pretty standard scoring. Darius Geis, Red, Redskins coach Jay Gruden said it's been very exciting watching second round running back Darius Geis catch the football. More of a first, second down banger, but they're talking about his catching. Um, I absolutely love to hear that. I don't think I own any Darius Geis, to be honest with you, in best ball. Maybe I'll take him this this draft. Um, I don't know. I love Geis as a runner. He's an absolute animal. I made this point earlier in, in the offseason. It was really early, and then I was like, eh, maybe that was a little strong. But I was like, if you're going to take Jordan Howard in the late second, early third, why not not take him and then take Darius Geis two or three rounds later? There's no reason not to do that because they're both going to get 
a ton of touches. I don't think Jordan Howard's going to get the same amount of carries he got last year. I just don't think that offense is going to do that. I think they're going to pass the ball too much, and I think they're going to use Cohen a lot. I don't think he's going to get near that 300 carry mark because they had games where he's getting 35, 30 carries a game, and I just don't think that's going to be the style of offense that they play in Chicago. So I think his total carries go down, and I think Darius Geis is a lock to get about 240 to 260 carries, along with hopefully some passing work. That would be stellar. This is crazy. I've never waited this long for this to happen. I literally might leave, deposit more money just so I could play in this $25 one just to get this this ting rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. What? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that because I, like I like to get high stakes. I'm going to get high stakes for y'all. Are you ready? So give me a minute to deposit this. What's the deposit, baby? Let's get it. Can I do 13 bucks? Hey, you Got to go through PayPal. You guys are going to have all my information and shit. This is crazy. This is crazy. What? You guys are going to be like, dude, I hate this video so much. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know what's the best? I actually write these off as business expenses, as market research. Isn't that awesome? Me depositing into the draft, I do that. I'm a real POS. Hopefully none of y'all are in the IRS. If you are, I am fucked. I'm just kidding. I, I do pay my taxes, though, guys. I promise. Jesus Christ, let's go. Yeah, we Gucci, baby. Come on. Jamal Lee. Jamal. I bet I get back to the lobby and this or that last spot is already taken. I'll be so pissed. Dante Pettis. Dude, I love I, – I actually think Dante Pettis is the receiver to own in uh, – yeah, let's go. $25 buy-in. Y'all are seeing it. High stakes, baby. Um, I have the first pick. Cool. Dante Pettis is learning all three receiver spots. I think he's actually the receiver to own this year in that San Francisco offense. I uh, Pierre Garcon was my busty pick of the week on my Instagram if you want to follow me or sign up to my newsletter. I, I shoot that out every week, one bust every single week. Uh, you can sign up for my newsletter right on my site, actually. I'll show you. Big Dogs Fantasy. Um, so if you just go to my homepage, scroll right here, right down, subscribe to BDG, just put your info in. I'll send you out one sleeper, one bust, and one tip or trick, fantasy football related, every single week. Uh, no spam or anything like that. Or just follow me on Instagram. I do that. So Pierre Garcon was one of my busts. Uh, Marquis Goodwin, I like, but I think he's like a role player. But the fact that they have, the fact that they moved up in the draft to pick Dante Pettis, and the fact that they're using him at all their receiver spots means that he's going to get on the field a ton. So I love that. All right. Finally starting off, $25 buy-in. Let's get it, peoples. Le'Veon Bell, just love him. You know he's my number one pick overall. Don't give a shite. And, you know, with this, you know, with these picks um, or with these drafts, I mean, you're going to get – you're going to end up with probably seven running backs and seven wide receivers on your team. So there's 18 roster spots total, right? And I want to take probably three quarterbacks, so that knocks it down to 15, um, you know, I'll probably take two tight ends. I might take three tight ends. So I might go three quarterbacks, three tight ends. That would be six, six. So 12 running back or 12 running backs and re receivers overall. I might take one extra at the position and only take two tight ends since I, I'll probably take, I'll legitimately take Gronk all the way up here. Actually, yeah, that that is like the one advantage I want in every single one of my leagues. I know at pick like five or six, a lot of you got, or six, seven, you guys are going to be like, whoa, that was really, really early. But I'm telling you guys, when you're in these smaller leagues, the only way to differentiate yourself is to get a guy like Gronk because there's not a lot of people who are a tier ahead, right? There's not a lot of RB1s that are elite. There's not a lot of wide receiver ones that are elite. There's not a lot of quarterback ones that are elite because the drop-off to the next guy, like Antonio Brown's elite, right? Don't get me wrong. But the drop-off from Brown to D-Hop or from Brown to Odell is not like really, really crazy high. So um, yes, I will be crazy and pick Gronk all the way up here because I want that advantage. And I don't think he falls to me at, um, actually the other thing to be smart is like that guy just auto drafted twice. So he's probably not here and he's probably going to, uh, miss his pick, but I'll, I'll take my first pick first. Actually, let me take, uh, Shaquan. I love me some Shaquan and then I'm going to go with Gronk. 
Well, I, do, I don't think he'll get back to me. There's a possibility that he might have, but playing in a $25 buy-in, you're probably playing with people who are pretty sharp and know good strategies like myself. So the Gronk pick uh, might not have been available at my next pick, and I just don't want to chance it because I think that's like the key to winning in smaller leagues like this for at least 2018. Um, had Hunter Henry not got hurt, there's probably a good chance that Gronk would have been uh, – I probably would have waited on Gronk and just made sure I got Hunter Henry like down here or something. So um, – what else are we looking at? I also really, 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 really want one of uh, D Hop or Odell Beckham too, because I think that's like I think the Brown Hopkins Odell Beckham is like a tier in itself. Oh no! Come on, fall to me. Yes, one more, one more, baby. Let me get that. Yeah, he's gonna go with Odell here. Guarantee it. Um, I think those are those three are like a tier by itself, kind of, and then the rest of them are. I mean, I really like Michael Thomas too, so I would I'd be fine with Thomas and Julio probably because Julio's a guy. Obviously, he's tough to grasp and redraft because he's so inconsistent on a weekly basis. But in best ball, if he does end up blowing up this year with those touchdown numbers, right? He finally kind of goes back to not maybe not the norm, but he goes back to like, um, ah, fucker. I thought he was gonna fall to me. If he goes back to like six or eight touchdowns and he continues at 1400 yards, then he's going to be really, really, really useful in best ball. So I'll probably grab a couple wide receivers here because I think it kind of falls off afterwards. So I'll grab Julio and Michael Thomas. Um, I think like the top six wide receivers this year are, are like there. It's like, that's a tier, but like, it's, I mean, it's broken up into like Antonio Odell, Deandre Hopkins are in there once here. And Antonio is kind of by himself at the top. And then it's Julio, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, in my opinion. And then from there, it kind of drops off a little bit. Like, I really like A.J. Green, but I don't really like that offense whatsoever. So you want to have uh, a pairing or at least one of those top guys. So you want, like, one of those top guys if you can. Um, but I also am trying to go, like, heavy on my running backs. But in a, in a three-person draft, your team's going to be absolutely stacked. It's going to be crazy. Like, that's a horrible pick going Aaron Rodgers right now because basically what I've talked about before. Going this early when you still have these running backs on the board is crazy because you're guaranteeing if – you, if you can grab, like, five of these top running backs, you know what I mean, um, on a weekly basis, you're going to get – you're only starting two running backs on a weekly basis. So you're going to get – at least two of them that score 20 to 25 points in a given week. And that's going to cancel out any advantage that Aaron Rodgers might have given you at the position. So I love the fact that he went Aaron Rodgers. Travis Kelsey was a good pick. I actually might have thought about taking him here. Um, but Zach Ertz will go pretty quickly. I'm not taking him. Uh, I was going to take A.J. Green there. Ooh, but I do love Devontae Adams. So I'll probably go with Devontae Adams. And uh, I love that trio of wide receivers I have now. And then this is, a t you know – Leonard Fournette versus Dalvin Cook is actually one that I've been kind of uh, harping on a lot. Those are my two favorite running backs here, but I'm going to go Fournette. I just think that Fournette's in for a huge workload. Like his workload last year, he had over 300 touches in just 13 games. They're bringing in Andrew Norwell, who was the best offensive uh, lineman available in free agency. So they already they, – they turned around that – that team drastically, obviously, from 2016 to 2017. That offensive line was a huge piece of it. And – now they bring in just another huge piece of that offensive line and Andrew Norwell to make things even easier for Fournette. So I think, you know, what's funny is like people are love Blake Bortles as a late round quarterback. I think that's horrible because you act like Bortles, Bortles like had those couple of years where he was a useful fantasy option. That was when they had absolutely no running game and when they had no defense. Now they have an elite defense and they have an elite running game. They're just going to keep feeding Fournette, keep feeding him and keep feeding him, keep feeding him and, and harp on that offense. So um, using I, I just feel like the Blake Bortles pick is horrible for most people. So that's where I'm at on that. Sorry to go crazy, but look how many elite running backs are still on the board. So if uh, if Dalvin Cook falls to me here, I'll go with him probably. And then as in terms of wide receivers, three kills a good best ball option, uh, obviously, because he's capable of having those splash plays, but I still have guys like Doug Baldwin ranked way ahead of Terry kill. So I would love a Doug Baldwin. You look at that wide receiver situation, pretty much just like I talked about with Tyler Lockett, so many targets. I don't think you understand how the target market share that Doug Baldwin is capable of having this year. It's really, really, really high. We're going to go with, what do you mean? It's not my turn. Sometimes this, 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 uh, this app like glitches out for some reason. Dalvin Cook. Um, one other tight end right now. No, I'll wait till next round. Um, 
still in wait. I'm going to wait until 16th, 17th, 18th round for that reason, because you're going to get three top 10 quarterbacks regardless. And there's no reason to waste an early pick when you could have got a Dalvin Cook instead of Deshaun Watson. Just doesn't make sense. Uh, Doug Baldwin. I, I really like, I'll probably go Doug Baldwin here. I'll, like I was talking about with T.Y. Hilton. I like T.Y. Hilton a lot in best ball. And I think I'm going to, I think he's going to end up falling to me here. So I'll get him at, in the next round. But guys, see, I'm just stacking up my skill players. After you get Gronk, uh, someone commented on one of my videos. I was talking about getting Gronk and then not needing a backup. I didn't mean in terms of health. Like obviously Gronk is always an injury risk, but in terms of production on a week to week basis, you will never need to worry about as long as he's in the lineup, you won't need to worry about having a guy who might uh, top him for production levels. But if you have a guy like Zach Ertz, if he doesn't score a touchdown, there's a good chance that your second tight end on your team, like say you get Zach Ertz and then you go like Delaney Walker. If, if Zach Ertz doesn't score a touchdown that week, there's a really good chance that Delaney Walker becomes your top scoring. Ah, oh shit, I didn't even realize McKinnon was still on the board. Your top scoring uh, tight end. But that will never happen with Gronk. So that's what I meant by you don't need a backup for him, really. All right, T.Y. Give me T.Y. And that's why I also like stacking up these elite running backs early, like going with uh top like getting your six running backs really early like Devonta Freeman as my RB5 is crazy because even if like worst case scenario you don't get a lot of the top wide receivers you're still getting guys like Juju, Stefan Diggs, Larry Fitz all the way down here and those are going to be like your wide receiver fives and sixes which is crazy ah damn he took took uh Freeman I still actually really like um Christian McCaffrey, because he has his exploding weeks, you know, where he goes for like 100, over 100 total yards off of like six receptions and a couple touchdowns. So he's someone I really like in best ball drafts as well. Um, yeah, we're going to go with Caps and we're going to go with TY. Think about it, guys. As my wide receiver five, if Andrew Luck is in the lineup, TY is automatically like a top five to seven fantasy option. Love that. So I'm loving my team so far. Obviously, everyone that every team is going to love their team. But I mean, he only has three wide receivers so far. That's what happens when you go with a quarterback early. And then this is a, this is a solid squad. But at the same time, he could have had another elite wide receiver or another elite running back. And the fall off from Aaron Rodgers on a points per game basis, week to week, to um, who else is left? Like right, I could still get Tom Brady or Cam Newton waiting six more rounds. It's not going to be that devastating. You know what I mean? But in my opinion, drop off from Gronk to Zach Ertz is huge. So that's why I always want that advantage. And I'm still waiting on, on – I told you, I'm not picking a quarterback until around 16, 17, 18. I'm not sure – I haven't really figured out the optimal tight end uh, kind of conundrum, if you want to call it. Do I want two, two or do I want three? I'm not really sure what makes sense in this slot. So if any of you guys have any thoughts on that, how many tight ends you would be going with in a uh, in a uh, in a best ball format? What are, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Joey Mixon. Um. What do we got? We got five and five running backs, wide receivers. I'm going to go with Stefan Diggs here. I don't own a lot of shares of Stefan Diggs, but I know how my people really love Diggs. Um, and it's good to diversify. I do so many of these best ball drafts, so I figure like I like to randomly, if I'm like, oh, I haven't I haven't gotten a lot of him, I like to kind of switch things up and grab um, guys that I know a lot of people are really high on, but I'm not so high on, but have a good chance of breaking out. So I like Diggy. And then I'm going to go with Joe Mixon just because I love that guy. Mixon's talent is unbelievable. He's going into this year as the clear workhorse. That's something he didn't have last year, right? People are like, oh, why Why are you going to be high on Mixon this year when he didn't do that much last year? Well, one, they improved that offensive line, right? They used their first-round pick on the center, Billy Price, which was a big weak point of their line last year. And then they got Cordy Glenn via a trade from the, from the Bills. He's usually hurt, but when he's healthy, he's one of the better, much better left tackles in the league. So, that will shore up their offensive line, which was a huge issue for the Bengals and Mixon last year. Last year, he also did, just didn't go into the year as the workhorse there. He was splitting time with Jeremy Hill, was splitting time with Gio Bernard, and now they're like clearly going into this year with the idea that he is the guy. So I expect 18-plus touches, and anyone with that kind of talent – I mean, if you watch him play, he really is Le'Veon Bell. 
And Le'Veon Bell, if you think about it, think about his first year that he had. It was really, really, really poor. It was behind a pretty bad offensive line in in Pittsburgh. Um, just a lot of the same tendencies. And the fact that he lost weight after that first offseason, so did Joey Mixon, as per the reports. So it's just like a lot of um a lot of good um a lot of good signs coming out of Joey Mixon's camp that he's gonna be in for a good breakout. And you can get him so late. So love me some of Joey Mixon. And the cool the funny part about it is like you see so many good running backs and wide receivers on the board that probably won't get picked. Like I don't know, like Alex Collins and Rashad Penny and Sony Michelle. I love Sony Michelle, but there's no reason to take him above guys like this because there will be games where Sony Michelle only gets 12 carries probably. So uh, there's no reason to do that when you have all these guys who are, who are going to get, you know, they're the workhorses there. Tight ends. I'll probably go. I think I'm going to go with three tight ends and three. Um, and why does this keep doing this? And three quarterbacks. So I'll grab Greg Olson because, I, you know, I love Delaney Walker, but I love him in season-long leagues because he's going to give you consistency. So Delaney Walker doesn't have the game, the week-by-week week upside that a lot of these uh, tight ends have. So for, for pretty much I've been passing on him pretty much in um, in these leagues. Actually, no, I own him in a lot of them, in the, in the bigger ones, in like the 10 or 12 team leagues. I like Delaney Walker, but in the shorter ones, you might as well get guys with really high upside. So that would be like an Evan Ingram, I, I believe, um, or like a – I actually like Kyle Rudolph because he, he doesn't put up the yard total, but he's a touchdown scorer, right? And you look at Kirk Cousins coming into Minnesota. He's a guy who really, really, really heavily utilized Jordan Reed in his time. In the, in, in the short sample that we have of them having success together, Jordan Reed was really heavily targeted in the 10 zone, in the red zone, in the end zone, all the goddamn zones. So if Kirk Cousins takes a liking to Kyle Rudolph, and Kyle Rudolph's already shown to be a really good red zone weapon, uh, so I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of end zone looks from Kyle Rudolph. So he's not a guy I really like in any sort of PPR league because the receptions and the uh, and the receiving yards aren't really going to be there. But in a in a best ball format, you know, like I said, if you're going to score a if you're going to score a touchdown, you're probably going to be a pretty good pick at tight end because you're going to be like a top five or top six option week in and week out. If you all you got to do is score a touchdown. So now is when I told you the last three picks is when I'll be waiting for um, a quarterback. And look, look who's still on the board. If n- if neither of them take a quarterback here, I'm going to be able to grab Cam Newton, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, which is absolutely crazy. Cam Newton's a guy I absolutely love in best ball drafts because he will have his down weeks, but he'll also have his 40-point weeks, right? And uh, that will give you a heavy advantage. So Cam, fall to me, baby. Fall to me, baby. Give me that. Give me that. Cameron, come on, Cameron. Don't do it to me. He's totally going to take Cam right now, I bet. Don't play me. Don't play me. Come on, Jamal. Girl. This is starting to piss me off. All right, so I'm going to grab two quarterbacks here. Cam, and then this is a good – I'm only – the reports right now are that Carson Wentz is looking really good way ahead of schedule. Uh, that being said, though, I'm still going to take Drew Brees because Drew Brees had such a down year last year. And I think – well, I, now even more so with the Ingram suspension. They don't have running backs to lean on as heavily. His touchdown percentage was way below his career average. The amount of pass attempts was like his career low or at least a low in New Orleans. Um, the amount of – Passes he attempted in the red zone was extremely low. I think Drew Brees is in for a very big bounce back this year, or at least back to the norm, which would give him really good numbers. And the fact you can get him at usually like quarterback seven or eight now is uh, is great value, I, I believe. So I absolutely love Drew Brees to bounce back this year. And then I have one more pick. So who do I like? I mean, if, if Wentz falls to me, I'm definitely going to go with Wentz here. This is upside is so huge, especially in his third year. Um, otherwise, Matthew Stafford is probably my favorite like floor quarterback. He played arguably the best football of his career last year, 4,400 yards, I think it was, and like 28 touchdowns or something. And you look at what he did over the second half of last season. Same with Ben Roethlisberger. Put up 2,500 passing yards and 19 touchdowns over his last eight games. When you average that out, bro, that's 5,000 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, which is insane. And that doesn't even count the uh, – 460 passing yards and five touchdowns he had in the playoff game against the Jags. So Ben Roethlisberger, people worried about him. I wouldn't be. Matt Ryan's in for a, a bounce back. Jameis Winston, his second half of the year last year was very similar to Big Ben. Almost 2,500 passing yards and like 
16 passing touchdowns. So Carlos Hyde, ew. see, that's what happens when you take quarterbacks early on. You have to settle for guys like Carlos Hyde in the last round. Yeah, so I'll go with Car- Carson Wentz here. And that's my final team, y'all. Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Carson Wentz. And these were the last three rounds of the draft. Let me refresh this and see if they have the projections. What the fuck? Whatever. Um, these are the last three rounds, and these are your quarterbacks. You think picking Aaron Rodgers in the fifth round was an advantage for you? Absolutely not. These are the running backs. Love that. Wide receivers. Love that. Tight ends. Really love that. So uh, three-person drafts are really fun, guys, and I, I really suggest you check out draft, not because uh, you know I could use my, you could use my promo code, but because it's really good practice and it's really fun to do it. You can do three people, six, eight, 10, 12, Money leagues, anything from a dollar up to a thousand dollar buy in, really good practice. So, I, I highly suggest you guys check this out. Use promo code BDGE, you will get three dollar free entry into one of these drafts. Very cool. Um, and that's it for this one. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I apologize for all the long pauses and not really having this set up on time. But uh, if you enjoyed, thumbs up the video, please. If you are new, subscribe to the channel, and we're going to be coming at you with good draft prep all summer and i'll see y'all on uh, my vlog tomorrow and live stream on sunday which is where i'll be picking my uh the dynasty league winners or the dynasty league entrance guys